This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. This is Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry, brought to you by eejournal.com. And folks, we're going into space this week. Okay, maybe just not yet, but we've got some cool stuff to figure out first on land. (laughs) Howdy, I'm Amelia Dalton, and today we've got some code to cover. In this week's episode of Fish Fry, we're looking deep into the mind of the hacker, reaching down into your next embedded system code to find exactly where that security falls short and where safety isn't quite up to snuff. (laughs) Please welcome Andrew Gerson from The Bar Group. Andrew and I are getting real about embedded security and safety. We check out The Bar Group's security action plan unveiled at the Embedded Systems Conference this year and dig into the details of their recently released book entitled Embedded C Coding Standard. All right, without further ado, let's Let's get started. Hi, Andrew. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Amelia. Good to talk to you. So first off, tell my audience a little bit about what the Bar Group is all about. We're based in Maryland, the Washington, D.C. area, and our focus is on embedded systems, safety, and security. Our, Our mission is really to help as many engineers as possible design safer, more reliable, and more secure embedded systems. And in that, you see a focus on safety and security. We have training courses that we do publicly and on-site all over the world, and then we do consulting services for a number of companies in a number of different industries, all focused around the concept of helping these organizations train up and do a better job of creating safer, more reliable, and more secure embedded devices in this age of Internet of Things. So earlier this year at the Embedded Systems Conference, the Bar Group unveiled its security action plan. So what is this security action plan all about? That's a good question. So Michael Barr, our co-founder and CTO, was the keynote speaker at the Embedded Systems Conference this past May. And the focus of that talk was on security for embedded systems. The message that we were trying to get across, because we do a lot, as I noted, a lot of training and a lot of consulting in the area of security, and we've noticed that we don't feel that enough companies in our space are taking security seriously enough. So we wanted to, in the course of this presentation that Michael gave, at the conference, you know, define a set of, you know, kind of goals and expectations for engineers in this space, because that was really the audience for that keynote presentation. So we came up with this five-point action plan. The first of these five points is really fundamentally don't ignore security, and it talks about a little bit about ethics. As engineers, we all have an ethical duty. Anybody who is a member of the Association for Computing Machinery, ACM, or as a member of the IEEE, may or may not know that those organizations have a code of ethics about doing no harm to others and about accepting responsibilities for creating safer systems and systems that operate well. And so really at point one was just don't ignore security because as engineers in this space, we have an ethical duty to create safer and more secure systems. The second item in the action plan is adopt best practices that reduce bugs, reduce defects, things like using coding standards, doing static analysis on your software, doing code reviews, doing other process steps. There's a number of well-known steps that have been documented that can improve the quality of your code. And every year we do a, a safety and security survey, and the one we did earlier this year shows us engineers and companies still are not adopting these bug-reducing best practices as much as they should. Item three was to use cryptography where appropriate. Now, obviously, if you have an IoT device, if you're on the Internet, you should be encrypting your communications, your so-called data in motion, both data that moves between your device and the Internet. But even within your device, data rests in memory, data at rest. And there's data in motion in your device between different peripherals, between different processors. And you should consider encrypting that data that's communicated or at rest that's sensitive because that will make it more difficult for the hackers to get in your device. Number four is practice defense in depth. And really fundamentally what that means is to look more deeply to try and understand the mind of the hacker, the mind of the penetrator, the mind of the intruder, and Understand what's important to them, understand what the weaknesses are in your system, and do strong analysis and strong architectural evaluation of your own system to make sure 
that you're practicing defense in depth for your devices. And then the finally, the fifth item in the action plan was to basically stay educated about security. Obviously, you know, Bar Group has training courses in security that are useful to engineers, but there's many other opportunities as well to stay educated. There's lots of content on the internet. There's lots of articles out there. There's lots of other content. And really what we are finding is that a lot of companies will have maybe a small group of people that are security gurus, but they don't necessarily emphasize that every embedded systems, every embedded software engineer should be educated on security. And what we're really trying to say here is that everybody who writes code for embedded devices really needs to know something about security and understand the implications of what they're doing. So that's the five-point action plan that we laid out at the Embedded Systems Conference. Fantastic. All right. So let's circle back to that coding standard you talked of earlier. You guys just released a new book entitled Embedded C Coding Standard Free of Charge on your website. So tell me about this book and what engineers could learn by reading it. Right. So a coding standard and our coding standard, you know, these are a set of rules that software development teams use to ensure a certain uniformity in their source code and a certain readability and a certain level of portability and maintainability. So you could think of a coding standard as a series of rules. Bar Group, a number of years ago, developed our embedded C coding standard specifically focused on a set of rules for, and guidelines for format and implementation of source code that would reduce bugs. It's specifically a coding standard, and there are many coding standards out there from MISRA to CERT and other organizations, public and private, and many companies have adopted their own coding standards. But our coding standard was specifically made to focus on reducing bugs and making software more portable and maintainable. And over the years, we've made this coding standard book available as a reference that people could purchase as a PDF from our website. They could also license the Microsoft Word doc file so they could customize the coding standard because many organizations want to implement a coding standard, but they want something a little different, a little more focused on their needs, but they want a starting point. So we have a document file that people can customize by licensing it. And so over the years, that's been, those things have been available, and they've cost money. Not a lot of money, you know, just like 10 or $20 to buy the book and, or to get the PDF. But we, we really, as part of our focus on safety and security, we really decided that at this point that we really just really want as many people as possible to adopt this coding standard and use it to develop their own or whatever. So we did two things. We made the PDF version of the coding standard free. Anybody now could go to our website and freely download the coding standard and use it as is in their own teams. We also have created a online hyperlinked searchable version of the coding standard. So if you want to have an online reference for the coding standard, you can click on hyperlinks within our website at bargroup.com and go to different sections of the coding standard and see how we discuss different areas. And that also is free. And the last thing we did is we greatly reduced the cost of licensing the document file. So it's, it's attainable for anybody at this point. And fundamentally, as I noted, the goal in all of those things is to really get more and more people using coding standards because it's going to increase the quality of code and make code and devices safer and more secure, which, as I noted at the beginning, is really what our mission is. Great. That is super cool. Okay, Andrew, it's time for your off-the-cuff question. Now, I know you're a bit of a basketball fan like myself, and your favorite team is the 76ers. They're a bit of an up-and-coming team this year. So what do you think are their chances of making the playoffs, maybe making it past the first round? Uh, What do you think? Well, I am a 76ers fan, which means I know a lot about pain. I've been the team ever since I was a kid, so I remember the team back in the in the 70s when they lost to Portland in the finals and Bill Walton. I remember them in the 80s when they won it with Moses Malone and Dr. J. And since then, it's not been too good. But this year, I'm excited. I think we can make the playoffs this year. We've got a really young team with uh, Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons and the new first-round draft pick on uh, Markel Fultz. So I think... As teams go, we've got, we have to, a lot to prove because we've been really bad, but we've got some real good young talent. So I'm, I'm counting on us making the playoffs this year, which would be a pleasant surprise uh, given how things have been the last few years. So I keep my fingers crossed on that. I like it. What about 
of Portland versus 76ers final round of the playoffs this year. What do you think? <laughs> right, and we could have uh, Dr. J and Bill Walton, the honorary captain. Um, there you go. <laughs> that would be great. That would be that would be great. I think that was that's for for both of us. That's hoping for an awful lot, but you never know. We'll see what happens. I think that might be asking for a bit too much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Andrew. Thank you, Amelia. You know what embedded systems we're going to need safety and security for? Okay, totally trick question there. I know every single one. Okay, but maybe it's especially important when we're sending people to space. Maybe just throwing that out there. Okay, it looks like SpaceX is speeding up their target dates for a rocket ship to Mars. So Mr. Musk is saying that they're aiming at cargo on Mars in 2022 and people in 2024. All right, that's not too far in the future, right? (laughs) Okay, so how? Well, it seems like they're shifting focus a bit, consolidating the plan of action, and the center of the rocket man ride to the sky is the Interplanetary Transport System, or codename BFR. Now, just between you and me, if that codename really stands for what I think it means... I love that man even more than I thought was even possible. (laughs) Okay. Anyway, the BFR will be able to head up to Mars and, crucial to this plan, also make money. Yeah, I heard it's trading Bitcoin. No. (laughs) No, it will be used as a resupply vehicle for ISS, used for launching satellites, and as a shuttle bus, a, a quick one at that, to the moon. Now, the focus at SpaceX is shifting to BFR, the current Falcon Heavy, previously known as Falcon 9 Heavy, SpaceX's reusable super heavy lift space launch vehicle, and Dragon, SpaceX's reusable spacecraft, will be applied into this one system. And this will only be possible because, unlike Falcon 9, the goal of the BFR is to be completely 100% reusable. Falcon 9 is only about 70 to 80% reusable right now. So BFR is super cool, but get this. Mr. Musk is promising that this same technology, this interplanetary rocket system, could very well be used for travel on Earth. I mean, why wait for Domino's for 30 minutes when you could be in Italy in less than an hour? (laughs) All right. You know that TSA line is going to be a giant pain in the... Anyway, if you want any further information about Mr. Musk's fine plans for the future of Earth and space travel, I've included a couple links below the player on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash eejournal. If you're into Twitter, you can monitor our tweets at eejournaltfm. And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing, well, sure, you can follow us on LinkedIn as well. And we have a YouTube channel. I'm telling you guys, it's super cool. Keyword, EE Journal. It is brimming over the top with all sorts of techie videos, which also includes our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series starring yours truly. (laughs) And by clicking the links below the player on this week's Fish Fryin' page, you can grab our Fish Fryin' RSS feed or subscribe to Fish Fry via the iTunes store. And remember, if you want any further information about the stories covered in today's show, just head on over to eejournal.com and look for this week's Fish Fryin' page. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology, any fun EE conference coming up that I absolutely should attend, or even the best geeky hotspot in your city, shoot me a line at amelia at eejournal.com or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. And don't forget, rate our podcast on iTunes. Please, please, please. (laughs) For the week of October 20th, 2017, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.